Okay. okay. Yep. All right. Thank you, Cindy. All right. So this is the Armed Services Vocational Assessment Battery um, in service, and we're going to talk about the Armed Service Vocational Assessment Battery. So um, skip ahead. All right. And it's going to be a little wonky tonight because my computer is not cooperating. So Cindy's going to be running it from her computer and I'm going to be doing the presentation. But I'm Michael O'Connor. I'm a transition facilitator for students on the certificate track in the northeast part of Baltimore County. And Cindy can, can say hello. And Hi, I'm Cindy Sabo and I am the transition facilitator for also the central part of the county. Okay, thanks. All right, we'll skip ahead. All right. So what is the ASVAB? And this is the only slide I promise, the only slide I'll read to you word for word, but it is the Armed Service Vocational Assessment Battery is a multi-aptitude aptitude battery that measures developed abilities and helps predict future academic and occupational success in the military. It is administered annually to more than 1 million military applicants, high school and post-secondary students. So it's the test. If you want to get in the military, this is the test you have to take. And we'll get into more detail as we, as we move along here. Okay. All right. Um, with the military is with a lot of other things, um, acronyms are, are, are the way they go. So I'm going to run through, I call it alphabet soup because everything's got a, an acronym. Um, but the ASVAB <clears throat> is the Armed Service Vocational Assessment Battery. It's the test you take to get into the military. This next one's a little bit confusing because it's the Armed Forces Qualification Test. But the AFQT is the score you get on the ASVAB. And I'll show you how that'll make a little more sense later when we start to look at everything. So your AFQT is the score that you get on the ASVAB. Um, military entrance, entrance processing station used to be, you took the ASVAB at a, at a MEPS at a military entrance processing station and the MEPS for, for Baltimore and for most of central Maryland, most of Maryland actually is, um, Fort Meade. Um, if you live out in Western Maryland, far out West, you might go to Pittsburgh. Uh, if you live up in Cecil County, you might go to Philadelphia, um, cause they're a little more convenient, but if you're live in Baltimore County, your MEPS is going to be Fort Meade, Maryland. So that's where you'd go for your processing. Um, so if you decided to, 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 to begin the process to, to enroll in the military, <clears throat> you go down to Fort Meade, get a physical and, and go through your, your stuff there. Um, but you don't have to take the, the ASVAB at a MEPS anymore. You can take it at your high school or any place else that they offer it. And if you're not taking it at the MEPS, you're taking it at what's called a MET, a military entrance test site. So if you are, if you go to Perry Hall High School and you take the, Met, the uh, ASVAB at Perry Hall High School, your MET site is Perry Hall High School. So that's all that is. Um, this next one, we'll talk about a little bit, a little bit later, but the military occupation specialty, that's your job in the military. Um, and do the, the um, test you take, the score you get on your ASVAB will, will be one of the determining factors in what your military occupation specialty would be. So your MOS is the job that you have in the military. PDQ, that's a permanently disqualifying condition. Um, there are some conditions that will disqualify you from military service. Um, and we, again, we'll talk about those when, when we get to that part of the, uh, the presentation. Um, the TDQ, there are some temporary, disqual temporary disqualifying conditions also. Um, those are conditions that need to be explained in order for the process to keep going. And again, I'll, I'll get into more detail of that later. And there are two different ways to take the ASVAB. The PMP, the pencil and paper test, is the traditional test that you and I took when we were in school, you get a number two pencil with a good eraser and you fill in, you know, they give you four choices. You fill in A, B, C, or D, you go through and that's how, and that's the pencil and paper test. Um, the way that they, a lot of people do it now um, is called the CAT, the computer adaptive, computer, excuse me, computerized adaptive testing. And that is a test that you take on the computer. It's adaptive. Um, it's intuitive, um, and we'll go into that. And so you have more time to take it, but generally it takes less time to complete it. So um, it just depends on what kind of test taker you are as to which um, which uh, test you would take, the pepper, paper and pencil or the cat. Um, so we'll move on. All right. We talked about the AFQT, the Armed Forces, Armed, Armed Forces Qualification Test Score. These are the categories. These are Roman numerals. So category one is 93 to 99. If you score 93 to 99, that's, you know, that's as good as it's going to get. Um, that means you scored as well as 93 to 99% of the people who've taken the, the ASVAB. And, you know, any job you want in the military, as long as your other uh, qualifications are, are good, you can probably have that job. Um, number two, uh, category two is 65 to 92. Those are very good scores also. Um, 50 to 64, those are good scores. Um, those are category 3A. Category 3B is 31 to 49. 
And that's where the cutoff is, right? Those are those are average scores, 31 to 49. If you get to 4A, 21 to 30, you're just missing um, the, the, the qualifying score for the military. 4B is 16 to 20. You've missed it pretty significantly. 4C is 10 to 15. And category 5 is 1 to 9. All right. And if you see down at the bottom there, it says 31 is the minimum qualifying AFQT score. So if you want to serve in the military, you got to you have to get a 31 on the ASVAB. And if you want to serve in the Coast Guard, you have to get a 36. All the other branches of the military, the minimum qualifying score is 31. But for the Coast Guard, it's 36. OK, let's skip ahead. All right. The AFQT scores, um, the ASVAB is a norm reference test. All right. Scores are compared to other 18 to 20 year olds who take the test. So they norm it against 18 to 23 year olds. A score of 62 on the ASVAB means that you scored equal to or better than 62 percent of people who've taken the ASVAB. So that's what your score means. If you get a 30, that means you scored better than 30. Um, 30, you've scored equal to or better than 30 percent of people have taken it. If you get 99, you scored equal equal to or better than 99 percent of people have taken the ASVAB. OK, and as we talked earlier, um, the AFQT score determines your eligibility for MOS. All right. Your military occupation specialty. So if you score, you know, the, the categories, there were some cutoffs there, 93 to 99 or, or you know, if you score th it's 31 to 49, if you score like 48 and you want a, 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 an MOS that has, a, a you know, a 50, you're going to have to retake the test. Even if you're in the military, your MOS is determined by your AFQT score. So that goes with you. So when, even if you're in the military and you have a job and, you, and, you, and you're doing really well in that job and you want to take a job that requires a higher level um, of, 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 of competence, I guess, then they're going to ask you to take the, the ASVAB again and prove it um, that you can get the, 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 the qualifying score for that MOS, for that military occupation specialty. So again, your, your AFQT score, your ASVAB score will determine what jobs you can do in the military. Okay, skip ahead. All right, there are 10 subtests and, and on, on the uh, ASFAB, the general science right there. I'm not going to run through them all. I'll just read the, the arithmetic reasoning, arithmetic reasoning, word knowledge, paragraph comprehension. Those are easy. Those are easier than easier. They're English based uh, questions. Um, math knowledge goes with arithmetic reasoning, um, electronics information, auto information, shop information. Those are all um, those are some of the subtests and we skip ahead. The last two subtests are mechanical comprehension and assembling objects. Okay, so they are, um, you know, some some pretty technical science heavy math science heavy. You see, there are only two English sections, two verbal sections. Um, so, you know, and you're in the military. That is a, a engineering, math, science. Uh, for the most part, a lot of those jobs are, are not that you can't get a job. Um, there are jobs that that you can do if, if those aren't your specialties, but they are heavy. That's what they're looking for. Um, so the pencil and paper test has nine subtests. The auto info and the shop info tests are combined into one test and they, they show up on the on the uh, test as AS, auto and shop. The CAT, the computer test, has 10 subtests. Um, but when you get your score sheet, auto info and shop info are shown as AS on the AFQT score sheet. And we'll do a sample AFQT score sheet in a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But just so you know, um, that is uh, those. That's those are the tests. So there's nine uh, subtests on the pencil and paper, ten on the cat. Okay, we just flip ahead. All right, some te sample test questions. All right, so if Cindy, if you could click on that, and see if we can. All right, so if we let's go down to word knowledge. That's my specialty. I, I do well on that one. So just some sample okay. questions. Um, so I'm. So um, if you just look at it, these are the questions. These are similar to the questions you'd get if you took the ASVAB. So they're asking, what does antagonize mean? I happen to know that means provoke. So if we click provoke, hopefully it'll tell me that that is correct. Cindy, you want to try the next one? Um, you mean the next question or you want me to go the next? No, you want to try the next. You want to try it or you want me to keep going? <laughs> oh, you want me to do the next question? If you want. If you okay, want to sure. Well, yeah, Wilted no, you know, most sorry. nearly means... Well, how about I how about I click the wrong one so that we can see what happens? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. All right. Request it. And it says yeah. you're wrong, and it shows you the right one means limp. All right. So um, you know they, they all go along in that way. Apprehension means anxiety. Um, so we can let's go over to general science real quick just to give you an idea of what some of the other tests might look like. All right. Air is lens says the water because whew, all right it is lighter. Its molecules are farther apart. 
its molecules are closer together. I'm going to guess that it's B. Its molecules are farther apart. All right, Ooh, that was correct. You. Very good. All right, 100. I know the next one. Um, 100 percent, 100 degrees Celsius is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. That's where water boils. All right, but again, if you get a uh, an incorrect one, I'm not good. Salt helps ice to melt because it uh, uh, lowers the temperature and water freezes. Is that right? That's what I would say. Yeah, oh, right. okay. Wow. Okay. Look, I'm cruising here. Yeah. Principal gas in the Earth's atmosphere is, I think it's nitrogen, right? Yeah. Yep. There we go. All right. And what's the last one? Let me see. I think there's one more, right? No. Is that it? Okay. All right. Four for four. I'll take that. All right. So now those are, you know, that would, that was, not as hard as I thought it might be, but if you get down to electronics information, you're going to be getting some pretty, um, it's about that. There it is right there. All right. The current in the O2 ohm resistor is, goes into six volts, comes out, wow. I'm going to say one third amp, just because four is one, no, nope, one amp. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna embarrass myself. I keep trying these ones, so because solid state does not have diode, have no filament. They are less efficient than tubes, I guess. Require less operating power. All right, I'm gonna stop right there. But those are just okay. some examples of some, some questions. I'm embarrassing myself here, and I, I you know, I, I looked through the auto shop, and those are some pretty uh, pretty technical questions too. So. But if you're going to take the ASVAB, one thing to remember is, you know, you you don't. There are some commercially available t um, um, books you can get to to study for the ASVAB, some study guides. Um, and so, if you know shop and elec and electronics aren't your thing, you can get the the book and 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 study on your own and 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 hopefully do better. Um, so, um, so we can skip out of the test taking section there. Um, and at the end of the at the presentation, I'll show you the websites where you can find all this information on, on on the ASVAB and on the sample questions and things like that. So we'll skip ahead to the next slide. All right, and here's the summary, the AFQT summary score sheet. And Cindy, if you could click on that for us. And when that comes up, go to the top, see where it says resources right above login. And if we can go the second row, the sample ASVAB summary sheet. All right. And there is a, a sample ASVAB summary sheet. And you can see if we're looking on the right side, it says ASVAB results. And underneath it, it says career exploration scores. And you have three sub scores. So you have three over broad scores. So you have the verbal skills, the math skills, and the science and technical skills. So kind of like when you, you know, if you take the uh, Woodcock Johnson or one of those tests, you know, you'll take different tests and they break them down into math and reading and writing. Um, <clears throat> the same thing's done here with career exploration scores. Um, and you can see on their verbal scores, that was their strength. They scored a 65. Their math skills were 42. That was a relative weakness. So that's still a pretty good score. And 53 on science and technical. And then underneath is the are the subtests, the general science, the, the arithmetic reasoning, um, word knowledge, paragraph comprehension, math knowledge, electronics information, auto and shop information, and um, mechanical comprehension. Now, this one doesn't have the assembling objects. This is, you can see up the top, the score was done in 2019, and that was added to the test later. So this is a little outdated, but it, it's, it'll give you the, the basics. Um, and if you look here, you see where you have your, your X's out there. So um, um, let's go to the top one. It says verbal skills. They scored a 65. The X is on 65. So that's what you scored, but you have a, a gray band that goes, goes with that. And that's kind of tells you where you can expect to score. If you re retake the test again, you could expect based on the skills you show that you could get anywhere between a, probably like a 62 and a 68 on the verbal skills. <clears throat> With the math, you have a 41. So that gray band, again, would show that you get anywhere probably between a 40 and a 44 on that. And if you just go down through, I'm not going to go through every one, but the X gives you what you scored on this test. And again, the gray band gives you what you could expect to score. <coughs> Excuse me, what range you could expect to score um, if you were to take the ASVAB again. All right, down here, it'll just explain everything to you. 
um, these sections down here, explanation for your ASVAB scores. I'm not going to go through all that. Um, but there is in the, step in, uh, in the second category, explanation for ASVAB standard scores. They do tell you that this is used to, to figure out, you know, to get you into the military, but it's not the only thing that that determines, um, uh, you know, what you'll do when you're in the military, but it is one of the determining factors. Um, and it just, and it says, like I said earlier, um, if you don't score well in a certain test, you can take these tests again. Um, and, you know, they, they're, you can, if you want, you know, if you scored poorly in the auto shop, if you would get a job in an auto shop or take an auto shop class or to get the ASFAB um, career book and, and that you, and the study guide, you could study up and, and, and do better in these sections. So, um, you know, this person took it in the 10th grade, that's kind of early to take it. Um, so they have a little time to, to, you know, to get themselves acclimated. And if they really want a, a military career, they could get the study guide and they could do practices and hopefully score a little better the next time out. All right, we'll skip ahead. Cindy, thanks. All right. All right. So we said there are two types of tests for, for the ASVAB. There's computer adapt, computerized adaptive testing. That's the CAT test, all right? The CAT test is intuitive. So you take you answer a question. <coughs> Excuse me. If you get the question right, it takes you to a harder question. If you get the question wrong, it takes you to an easier question. And then it keeps going from there. So if the next question you get right, you get a harder question. If you get the next question wrong, you get an easier question. It keeps going until it finds your average. So it finds your floor and it finds your ceiling. Um, so there are 198 minutes allotted for the for the cat test all right but the average time is 90 minutes and the reason for that is you take each section of the test when you finish with that section if you're done before the time's allotted you can move on to the next section on, on the cat um if you you know if you want to take the full time um but the thing to remember about the cat is once you put your answer in there's no changing the answer all right so an answer is in there's no going back and and, and fixing it um, it's taking you to an easier or harder question, and then you just go from there, all right? <clears throat> so again, so once you've completed a section, you move on. There's no changing answers or no reviewing, all right? When you're taking the cat, they suggest that you answer as best you can, but don't just randomly guess, all right? Because you're penalized for incorrect answers on the cat, because if you guess, because you figure you saw that the sample questions, you get a choice of, choice of one of four. So three out of four of those are wrong. So if you're just grabbing one, there's a 75% chance you're gonna be wrong. So um, so what they suggest is that you, you know, try to, if you can try and whittle it down to one or two and then make an educated guess from there, but do not guess randomly because um, you will be penalized. You'll, you'll get a lower score on the cat because of that, all right? When the test is completed, you leave. So they said the average time is 90 minutes. I imagine some people get out of there in you know, 70, 75 minutes. Some people take the full, three hours and 18 minutes. Um, it just depends on, 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 you know, what you need for the cat. All right. But when it's done, you leave. So that's one of the benefits to it um, is that you, you know, you're, if you don't like, you know, if you get, if you don't like testing and you don't like sitting in a room for a long period of time, you can be out of there in as little as an hour, hour and, a, you know, hour and 15, hour and a half. Um, but you have three hours and, and 18 minutes if you need it. Okay. Skip ahead. Here's the pencil and paper test. This is the traditional test that you and I took when we were, you know, doing SATs and everything else. Um, you got a pencil, a number two pencil, a number two pencil with an eraser, and you fill in A, B, C, or D. There are 149 minutes allotted, so it's less time allotted for the pe pencil and paper. You know, an hour and a half um, allotted for the pencil and paper, just under an hour and a half. Uh, but you will stay for the allotted time. So. The, you know, they, they give you 15 minutes for that section, you take the full 15 minutes. So even if you're done in five minutes, you have to sit there. So you, but one of the benefits is if you're done quickly, you can review. Um, you can review that section. Once you move on to another section, you can't go back and review, but you can review that section until the time is up. So that's one of the benefits. All right. And also with the paper and pencil test, if you're running out of time, it doesn't hurt to guess. All right. So if you have, you see, you got 30 seconds left and, and 10 questions, just you know, hit all A's or all B's or A, B, C, D, whatever you want to do, because there's no penalty for incorrect answers on the pencil and paper test. They're just measuring correct answers on pencil, on the paper and pencil test. So that's some of the differences. All right. You skip ahead, please. All right. So the cat versus the pencil and paper. Um, so what, why, you know, what are the benefits or why take one? Um, because the cat is intuitive, a lot of people seem to think that sometimes some people think it's harder. Some people think it's easier. 
It just depends on what kind of questions you're answering. All right. If you have higher ability, it's going to keep taking you to higher questions. So if you get if you keep getting questions right, you're going to get harder questions and harder questions and harder questions. If you're not doing well, if you're getting questions wrong, it's going to take you to an easier question. If you get that wrong, it's going to take you to an easier question. So if you were discussed with somebody afterwards, you know what the ASVAB was like, and you said to to John who who nailed it and got them all right, he'd say, "Man, those are some tough questions." You know, I really had to think. And the other guy could say, "Well, I was getting these questions," and and John might think, "Well, those were a lot easier than mine. I should have taken his test." But that's not the way it works. So um, if you get it might seem like if you're not doing as well, it might seem like an easier, easier test. If you're doing really well and you just keep getting harder questions, it might seem like a harder test. All right. With the pencil and paper, you get questions from all levels. OK, so you're getting the easy questions to the hard questions and you answer as many as you can in the time allotted. OK, so it's not intuitive. It's not if you're answering right, it's not taking you to easier questions because pencil paper. They're already down and you're, and you're answering. All right. And just so you know, reported scores are linked across method of assessment. So regardless of the test you take, you can expect to get a uh, similar AFQT score, right? So whether you take pencil or paper, whether you take the CAT, they found that you will get a similar score. So there's, you know, the, the benefit is what, what you're more comfortable with, whether you're more comfortable with the pencil and paper, having more time to, to go back and review, or whether you're more comfortable with the CAT. And the thing about the CAT is if you don't know the answer to the question, you can't skip it because you got to answer to get to the next question. So, you know, whittle it down to one or two to two best responses and pick the one you think's best and then move on. Um, um, so that, you know, so that's that's the difference is that the cat is a little a little less forgiving, um, but the pencil paper um, will will take longer. OK, but again, you can expect to get the same score regardless of the assessment that you take. OK, moving ahead. All right. This is one. So we're, we're doing this for for parents. It's a special ed. Um, special education uh, presentation. So a lot of the students um, that the parents who would be seeing this or the students will be seeing this will have IEPs. And a lot of those students will have accommodations on their IEPs. <coughs> so can you take the ASVAB with accommodations? Yes, you can. You can take the ASVAB with accommodations. Will it count? No. All right. So, you know, why take the ASVAB? Well, Maybe you'll score well, maybe with the accommodations you'll score really well, you'll have some confidence that you can pass the test without the accommodations. Maybe with the accommodations you'll score 75 and with the, without the accommodations, maybe you'll score 50. But if you wanna get in the military, if that's your, your dream, if that's what you really want, then you know why not at least try, at least you'll know. Okay, so you take it with the accommodations. If you if you take it with accommodations and you don't score, you get a, you know one of those 4B or 4C or even five, test, then maybe, you know, like, again, again, you'll know I took it and I didn't do well, even with the accommodations. But if you do really well with the accommodations, maybe you get some confidence and you take it, uh, you know, without the accommodations, what's the worst can happen? You don't pass. All right. But, but at least you'll know again. Um, also, we'll go into this a little bit later, but the ASCAP can be a very valuable um, career exploration tool. Um, so it, it's, a, you know, even if you're not interested in the military career, it'll give you a lot of good information about what kind of worker you might be, what kind of learner you are, um, and what might be a good career for you um, post-secondary, right? And just uh, just so you know, if you're asking for accommodations, you're going to be taking the pencil and paper assessment, right? So if you're, you know, if you need the extended time, if you need a reader, those type of things, then you're going to have a, a pencil and paper assessment, okay? You can't use the cat if you're going to use assessments, all right? <laughs> Let's skip ahead. All right, sitting for the test. Um, after you take the test, you must wait one month before taking it again. So you can't take it this week, then next week. So you have to wait at least a month before you take it the second time. If you want to take it a third time, you have to wait another month. All right. After the third test, you have to wait six months before retaking. All right. So, um, so you probably take it, you know, four times in a year, and then. After that, it'd probably be getting less valid. You'd be getting, you know, the same questions over and over again. But something to remember um, is that your most recent score is the score that counts. You can't pick your best score. So if I was to take the ASVAB today and I scored 50 and I took it again tomorrow and I scored 46, I can't say, well, I'll take the previous one. Your most recent ASVAB score is the one that counts. All right. So. Why would you retake it? Um, because if you're borderline, if you, you know, if you really want to, you know, if you scored 90 and you wanted to get into that one group, you know, you wanted to get it to 93, 99, you might take it again because you're probably not going to fall that much because it's a big gap you get from like 60 to 92. So um, 
so you, you, you know, your AFQ, your AFQT score category is not going to change that much if you drop back a little bit. But if you want to get a little higher, it might be worth taking again with the caveat that if you score worse, then you have to take the score that's worse or you have to take the test again to try and get the higher score. Right. Also, um, for those familiar with taking the SATs, if you do, you know, if you take the SATs numerous times and you got, uh, you know, a uh, you know, a, a 700 on the math on one test and 690 on another, you can pick the 700 and then take the verbal off a different test if that was higher. Um, you can't do that. The ASVAB is the ASVAB. With the, the one test is the, the one that counts. You can't pick and choose from each test. Okay, skip ahead. All right. So um, again, for our students with IEPs and, and other conditions, um, PDQ, permanently disqualifying conditions, and TDQ, temporarily disqualifying conditions. OK, so if you want to serve in the military, just some things to think about. Um, does an IEP automatically disqualify you from service? No, an IEP doesn't automatically disqualify you from service, but it will set off some red flags and they're going to ask some questions. So I wouldn't put in the category of a TDQ, but they're just going to, you know, they're going to ask, why do you have the IEP? What, what's what's the reason you have the IEP? And then they might, they'll make, might make a determination from there, but it's not immediately disqualifying. OK. Is an ADHD diagnosis disqualifying? Yes, that is a PDQ. So if you have a diagnosis of ADHD or ADD, um, any of those, um, it's considered a PDQ and you're not going to be eligible for service regardless of the ASVAB score. Um, I'm sure you can appeal it um, and you can try, and uh, but uh, that is, um, that is right, right now it's considered a PDQ, a permanently disqualifying condition. Um, uh, are prescribed medications disqualifying? Possibly, depending on what they're prescribed for. At the very least, it will be a TDQ, a temporarily disqualifying condition that must be explained. Right. So if you're on medication, um, you know, asthma medication, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be going through a pre-physical, um, strenuously physical um, training when you join the military. So they want to make sure that you know you don't have uh, any cardiovascular conditions that are going to hinder you. Um, if you're taking medication for ADHD or those type of things or for any other, they want to know uh, why you're taking it and whether it's going to interfere with you because they are making a, a, a big uh, investment in, in, in you and you know and hopefully you, you know you're, you're investing in the military also so it's a, it's a works both ways but they want to make sure that you're going to be able to meet the, the, the qualifications. All right. Some examples of PDQs of permanently disqualifying conditions are heart or vascular conditions that are incorrectable, um, scoliosis, psychiatric disorder, uncorrectable vision and hearing. Okay. So those are examples. And there, there are others, but just to give you some examples of a PDQ. TDQ examples are anything that may be correctable. Um, earwax buildup, gastrointestinal issues, dental issues, vision and hearing issues that can be corrected. Those are all um, TDQs, and if, if you go, remember we said earlier when you when you if you decide to start the process, you take the ASVAB, and if you pass the ASVAB, and then you move on, you go to your MEPS military entrance and processing station. Again, that would be Fort Meade. If you went down to Fort Meade to get your physical, and the process was moving along, and they discovered dental issues or vision hearing issues, <coughs> excuse me, or earwax buildup, um, they would they at that point would 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 stop the process the process would stop until the issue has been resolved i know earwax buildup is a strange one um, but when i i, I talked to a uh, to our, our county um resource on on rotc he explained to me that earwax is um it happens pretty frequently in earwaxes buildup is an example is a, a condition of it's a side effect of other conditions so uh, if you have a thyroid disease you might have earwax buildup um so they want to know about that so they want your doctor to say that you don't have a uh, so if you were to show up and you had excessive earwax, they want a note from your doctor saying you don't have a thyroid condition or any other condition that is associated with uh, with um, earwax buildup. All right. Just a, another anecdote that he told me um, when I met with him, he said that when you if if you do decide to, to go ahead, um, they're, they're really looking to see if you're paying attention. And he had one of his students. It was a female um, from one of his high schools who was sent, went down to Fort Meade to the MEPS and had taken the ASVAB and done well and was called down. And they went they were very specific about what you can wear. And they were told that you don't wear thong underwear. And when she got down there, she had thong underwear on. So that became a TDQ, a temporary disqualified condition. She got sent home and I guess to change her underwear. Um, but it's, it's a strange story, but he, 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 you know, the way he explained it to me was that 
they want to make sure that you want to really want to do this and that you're really paying attention to the details. And that's one of the details that was in there. So, you know, a lot of service in the military is, you know, dependent on, on paying attention to, to minute details and they want to make sure you're paying attention. So kind of a strange story, but I just thought that was really interesting. All right, we'll skip ahead. All right, score reporting. So some some students, some parents are concerned that if you take the ASVAB, you're going to get hounded by military recruiters. Um, that is not the case in the state of Maryland. <clears throat> there are a number of different options. I'm not sure what the, all the other options are, but Maryland is what's called an option eight state. That means that only the test taker and the school get the results. So, um, you know, if you were from Parkville High School, you're, you get it and Parkville High School, representative of Parkville High School, your guidance counselor, I'm guessing, will get the results, but nobody else gets the results, All right. So you might ask yourself, why am I hearing from military recruiters? Well, you might remember a few years ago um, during the Obama administration, the Every Student Succeeds Act was passed and that allows the Department of Defense to receive information about students. So regardless of whether you're interested in the military or not, the Department of uh, Defense can um, ask for information about you. And so, you know, who's graduating this year? Can you send me a list of all your 18 year olds um, who are not going to college maybe? Um, and so you might send that, that information off or you might just send off all 18 year olds just so you have it. And then they might, you might, so you might get a call from a recruiter regardless of whether you uh, have taken the ASVAB or not. And just a, a, another anecdote, um, Personal anecdote, I, I work with students who are a certificate. Um, a lot of our students, the students I work with have intellectual disability and autism and, and some other conditions. So they wouldn't be eligible for the military. They get calls um, because they are 18 years old and they're exiting school that year or might, well, they wouldn't be exiting school that year, but they're 18 years old. They get calls uh, sometimes at, at IEP meetings. I'll meet with a parent and they'll tell me, I got a call from a military recruiter. Why is that? And it's because, because you know, schools receive federal funds and Department of Defense is a federal agency, so they're allowed to get information from the schools. So that's why. So I went a long way to tell you that whether you take the ASVAB or not, you might hear from a military recruiter. You won't hear just because you took the ASVAB. Okay. Move on. Skip ahead. All right. This is the ASVAB fact sheet. Um, and if, Cindy, if you could click on the... All right. All the information that we just... that. Almost all the information in the PowerPoint will, you can be found in there. If she just kicked down, there's the computerized ASVAB. It explains how the, the CAT ASVAB works. Underneath that is a paper and pencil. It explains how the paper and pencil works. If you go to page two, um, there are all the subtests. And it breaks down at the bottom there about how, you know, you take nine subtests. If you take the pencil or paper, you get 10 subtests if you take the, the, the CAT. Um, but they're all scored. Um, the same on the uh, AFT, AFQT summary sheet as an um, as uh, AS Auto and Shop. Okay, if we skip ahead to the next page, uh, not no, no but, um, keep. I'm sorry, could you go? Yeah, I'm sorry. You just go down. Yeah, there you go. There are the uh, the CAT ASVAB time limits. So there, and again, I'll show you where you can get all this information on the ASVAB sites. You know, um, but. Um, you can see that the, you know the general science test on the cat you have 15 questions you have 12 minutes on the paper and pencil you have 25 questions and 11 minutes okay and it just goes down so and again it adds up to 198 minutes for the cat 149 minutes but again you're going to spend all 149 minutes there for the pencil and paper where with the cat you know you have 15 questions you have 12 minutes if you finish them in five minutes and you can't review them anyway, so you just move on. You go to the next test. You go to the arithmetic reasoning and then the word knowledge and then the paragraph comprehension and you just math knowledge. You keep going down until you're done. So if you do each test in five minutes, you got 10 tests. You'll be done in 50 minutes and you'll be out of there. You can leave. Where with the paper and pencil, you're there for the, for the full two and a half hours. And just underneath that, just kind of explains how the, the cat works. If you see the initial question down there, um, you, have, you see that chart. If you get it correct, you go up to a harder question. If you get it incorrect, you go down to an easier question. And then you take that question from there. If you get the easier question correct, you go hard, you go to a harder question. If you get the easier question incorrect, you go to an easier question. Um, if you get the harder question, if you're staying on the harder side, you, you're, you keep going, uh, you're, you're, you'll keep getting more difficult questions. Um, if you get that question wrong, you'll get an easier question. That's the way it works. So it'll figure out your floor and your ceiling um, for, your, for your score. And then just some frequently asked questions about the ASFAB. Um, down at the bottom on page four, all right? But again, in a few minutes, I'll show you where you can find all that information on the websites, all right? So Cindy, if we can skip ahead, I think we might be at that page, all right? 
All right, so here are three sites. Um, cl yeah, click on the first one, the official ASVAB site. All right, so this is the ASVAB site. And you can see that first row there, there are a number of ways to enter. You can enter as an applicant or as a student who's gonna be taking the test, as a recruiter, as a counselor or educator. So we'll just take quickly take a look at the enter as an app applicant. If you click on that, Cindy. There you go, thank you. All right, and you can see that there are just, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The On the bottom right-hand side is the ASVAB fact sheet, that fact sheet we just went through. That's if you want to find it and get those facts, that's where you can look. And if you look just above that, sample questions earlier, um, uh, I think it's slide eight, we, we went through those sample questions. So that's where they all are. So if you want to, you know, just get an idea of what, 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 what you can expect when you take the ASVAB, you can click on those sections, all right? So you can just go up to counselors and educators, um, and you can see that, you know, different things. So just, yeah, just the different categories that, you know, preparing for the ASVAB history of the test. So, and again, there's the ASVAB fact sheet. So no matter any one you click on, you're going to get the ASVAB fact sheet. So it's 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 everywhere on the ASVAB site. Um, but if you want to get a lot of information about what to expect, how to prepare for it, this is a good spot to come and start. And again, like I said, there are some commercially available test preps that you can use. All right. So if we can go back to that um, page real quick, Cindy. You want the PowerPoint or me to go? PowerPoint, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. And go to the bottom, the ASVAB program. All right. We looked at this one briefly earlier um, when we show when we looked at the uh, AFQ score summary sheet. But just um, if you, you if you look on here, just if you click on participants for me, Cindy. There you go. Thank you. All right. And if we click on explore, the you know each one's good, uh, but explore. Um, just click on that. And if you look underneath that, um, a lot of our students will, are familiar with the REASEC. It's a lot of the assessments that we use, use the REASEC scoring system. And that'll just determine um, what, what your interests are and what, what might be good fits for you. Um, the REASEC, um, was it realistic, investigative, artistic, social, entrepreneurial, and conventional, I think is the C in REASEC. Um, but the point I'm trying to get to is that the, the ASVAB, even if you're not interested in the military, is a very good tool um, to see what you might like to do once you do leave school, um, whether, you know, whether it's after college or after high school or after, you know, whatever trade you get into. Um, it's a really good tool. Um, and so if you go back to the top real quick, Cindy, just um, top of this page, yeah, just scroll back up to the top. There you go. So um, if you see where it says login, if you want to log in, you can go and log in, put in your information, get a number, and then you can go in and just keep adding all your information in here, take the different assessments, and it'll just give you, it's a pretty good, it's a really good tool um, to figure out what you might want to do post-secondary, right? So it's not just for the military. It's, you know, obviously it's by the military and, and um, I think the point that the military is trying to make by, by showing you that um, is that any job you get in the in the, 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 the private world, there is a corresponding job in the military. So if you want to, you know, go to college, that's great. If you don't want to go to college and you, you know, you don't know what you want to do, but you know, there are any number of jobs in the military that you can try that will translate to the real world, not when I say the real world, but to the, to the world, you know, to, if you got out, when do we get out of the military? If you wanted to be a carpenter, you can be a carpenter in the military. And rather than do an apprenticeship, you can get your your work and all your training in the military and 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 you know serve your country and get it and, and learn a trade. If you want to work on a nuclear uh, facility, um, you can do that in the military. If you want to be a pilot, you can do that in the military. Any job that exists in the in our world exists in the military. Okay. So we go back to the PowerPoint one more time, Cindy. And then go to the middle one, the middle one, careers in the military. This is a good site. And again, you can find all these sites um, on the ASVAB. Um, and if we just go to guided exploration, um, we'll just work through this real quick. So if you see right up there, it says there are currently there are one of there are 272 jobs in the military. OK, and they all correspond with jobs that you have in, in, in the non-military world. All right. There are some of them. there: accountants, acquisition and contracting, auditors, administrative support specialist, advanced practice nurse. Postal Administrative Specialist and Information Control Specialist. And if you look on the left-hand side, it says, which of these activities interest you? So Cindy, if you just want to click on two or three things that, that might interest you, all right, and just stop right there for a second. You see, we went from 
you know, she clicked on three, that's fine. Um, we went from 272 down to 260. So we, we eliminate 12 that, that wouldn't be good matches for, but if we click on next, we still have our 260 up there. Now, if you click on what type of environment you'd like to work in. Um, so if you wanna be outdoors, we just went from one, from 220 to 94 different jobs. All right, these are all 94 jobs that if you wanna work in those three things that Cindy clicked and you wanna do it outdoors, these are things you could do. So um, Cindy, if any of those, any that appeal to you, if you could just click on any one. Um, so if armed, armored assault vehicle crew member, all right? This is for an enlisted man. This is not an officer's, there, there will be an officer's officer job too, but this is for enlisted man. You can see it down there underneath the picture. It's checked enlisted and it's checked active duty, all right? And Cindy, if you could click what they do, that plus next to what they do right there. You see what I'm talking about? There you go. Those are the things that that the armored uh, tank driver do. If you want to do training provided, click on that. That plus, all right, this is the training that the military provides, the work environment. And so you'd be in an armored assault vehicle crew member. And if you click on the last to find this job, armored assault crew members are in the Army and the Marine Corps. So if you were to take this assessment and find that this is a job you're really interested in, um, then you would have to, you know, if this is something you really want to do, then you want to consider the Army or the Marine Corps for that job. Okay. So it's just a good site. Just to see if you're really considering a career in the military, just it gives, it shows you what, how the number, they, there really are a lot of options and it tells you where you would go um, to do that job. And if you just go to advanced search, click on that up, up top, Cindy, and just, all right, there we are back at the 272 um, jobs. If you click sort by skill importance, if you could just click that for me real quick. Now, when you take the ASVAB, you're going to get a, a, a verbal score, a math score, and a science technology score. So whatever your specialty was, so mine, I'm, I'm positive, would be reading because or it would be the verbal score because I'm an English major. So if you click on verbal, 160, uh, 272 just went down to 160. These are where verbal skills are the most important. So there are a number of jobs in the military you could do if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to, if your, if your strength was the, the, the reading and the verbal. Um, and I'm not going to go click all through them, but you, this is, this is just a quick, you can see, um, uh, let me just see air, air, airline pilots. There it is. If you want to be an airline pilot, you would be, have to be an officer. It's an active duty or reserve. And these are the branches of service right there that offer it. The Army, the Marines, the Navy, the Air Force, the Space Command, and the Coast Guard. So regard, if you wanted to be an airline pilot, you can go into any branch of the military. It exists in all branches of the military. Okay? You'd have to be an officer. So you'd have to either go and enlisted and then become and get invited to officer candidate school or go to an academy or go to college through ROTC or after college, go to officer candidate school. Um, or if you were already a pilot, you might be able to get a direct uh, direct commission, All right? But just again, you can see air bat, airborne combat navigators. Again, those are pilots, all source intelligence officers. Those are officers in the active duty and they are intelligence officers. So it's just a good place to come and get a lot of information about jobs in the military that do correspond with jobs in the real world. So if you have, you know, if you're interested in being a pilot or if you're interested in, in some type of intelligence work, um, the military would be a good place to get started. All right. So let's see if you want to go back to the, there we go. And if you want to skip ahead and this is just, that, that's just the site from the careers in the military. Um, there's, you know, we, we already discussed that. So if you want to go one more and uh, if anybody has any questions, Cindy, do you have any questions? I do not have any questions. You've covered right. it all. All right. Well then, um, thank you for coming. And that is our ASVAB presentation. Thanks.